What is going on everybody? We are outside today on the back porch doing this part of the vlog because it is such a nice spring day out here. So I figured I should probably do the video outside and not stay up in my room the whole day. So other than the change in scenery, is there anything that you notice that is different about this image? How about now do you notice anything different? Did you guys pick up on it yet? I'll give you a little hint. I'm not switching between two different cameras. I'm still vlogging on the same exact camera. Proof of that is that the R is right here and I would probably get a similar look with this out of the EOS R, but it's not because of that. So if I'm not switching between cameras, it's in fact a little special piece of equipment that I just bought a couple weeks ago that has probably become essential to my camera bag. So we'll come back to that here in just a second. Right now I'm shooting this part of the video on the EOS R because I wanna talk about the M50. As you guys know, the M50 has been my main vlogging camera for the last two months ever since I bought it. I have shot pretty much every single vlog, give or take a couple videos, using this camera ever since I bought it. So I have used it practically every single day. This camera literally has been everywhere with me ever since I bought it. It's been down to the city with me, it's been down to Virginia with me, it's been all the way out to Canadian Valley with me. It literally has come everywhere with me. It's such a tiny camera, it's so compact, and the capabilities of this camera are awesome. I can shoot in 24 frames per second just for regular stuff like I'm doing right now. I could shoot in 60 frames frames if I want to do some slow-mo b-roll. I could even shoot in 120 if I absolutely wanted to, but that 120 is at 720p and not 1080, which is okay. I can shoot in 4K in this camera, but I don't really use the 4K because I lose the dual pixel autofocus, which is still absolutely amazing in this camera. Bottom line, over the last two months of me using this camera, I have really, really become attached to this thing, and it's really become a staple in my setup. I've actually used this for a few corporate jobs. As great as this camera is, it is limited by a couple of things. Things. For example, I can't put any of my bigger EF lenses like my 16 to 35 or my 50 millimeter or even my 70 to 200 onto this camera because the mounts are completely different. I would have to go out buy an adapter and depending on the kind of adapter that I would buy, I would still be limited by this camera because it's a crop sensor camera and I wouldn't be able to get the full use out of my EF lenses. And I was searching high and low for an adapter that I could put on this camera so maybe I could put my larger lenses on here. And then after doing a little bit more digging and research on the internet, that's where I found this thing. So this little thing right here is an adapter, in fact, but it is also a speed booster. I don't think I mentioned this, but this is a Viltrox speed booster. Not only is this an adapter that allows me to put my EF lenses and EFS lenses onto this camera, but it also works as a speed booster. So this Viltrox speed booster is a 0.71 speed booster. Now essentially what that 0.71 means is that it takes the f-stop of your lens, like let's say you put a 16 to 35 f 2.8 lens onto this adapter. This speed booster essentially takes the 2.8, which is the widest aperture of that lens, multiplies it by 0.71, and then after rounding up a couple of decimals, that basically turns the f 2.8 lens into an f 2 lens because the speed booster allows for more light to come into the sensor, thus adding extra stops of light, thus making your lenses a little bit faster, which is super, super cool. So normally my vlogs from the M50 look like this, using the 15 to 45 kit lens that comes with it. But with the speed booster, because my speed booster lets in more light, kind of opens up my aperture a little bit more, thus allowing me to have a much shallower depth of field. If you notice the difference in the background between the two images, it's that this background right here with the speed booster attached is much blurrier. It's because more light is available for the sensor to pick up. That basically adds a couple extra stops of light, which basically allows me to have a much shallower depth of field rather than if I have this little kit lens on there which is super super cool furthermore with the speed booster on here I could take this little nifty 50 f 1.8 which is a $100 lens and because of the speed boosting capabilities of the Viltrox speed booster it goes from being a 1.8 to being a 1.2 it takes this $100 lens right here opens up the aperture a little bit more so that it basically is on par with a $1,200 focal length equivalent. Isn't that nuts? So in addition to the speed booster making your lenses faster, it also keeps these lenses fairly close to their actual focal lengths. Now it doesn't mean that your camera becomes a true full frame camera with this speed booster by any means. What it actually does instead is it widens up the field of view that is being projected onto the sensor, if that makes any sense. So the speed booster doesn't necessarily change 
change the sensor size of the M50. It is still a crop sensored camera. For photos, I really don't see any issue with this thing. Photos still come out looking sharp. They come out looking crisp and clean. Particularly my favorite lens to use with the Speed Booster for photos is my Nifty 50. I don't really use anything else. For video, pretty much all around the same deal. I don't see any disadvantage. I don't see me losing any features. The autofocus is still spot on. Everything still works perfectly fine, if not better, with photo and video on the M50 using this Speed Booster. I filmed that entire opening B-roll sequence using the M50 with the Speed Booster and the 16 to 35 on it, just to give you guys a little bit of a look. In addition to that, if you're shooting in 4K, the 4K crop is kind of reduced thanks to this Speed Booster. So if you are filming in 4K with this camera, you still don't have dual pixel autofocus, you still have contrast-based autofocus, which isn't great. But personally, I don't really shoot in 4K. I've never really shot in 4K using this camera. I maybe did once, but other than that one time, I never really used it. Another great thing about this speed booster is that it is incredibly affordable. I think I bought this for like 150 or 160 bucks on Amazon. I don't know, link below. Compared to other speed boosters and lens adapters that are out there, this really takes the cake if you're looking for a budget-friendly setup. With this adapter allowing me to put my EF lenses onto the camera and making them faster, keeping them as close to their true focal lengths as possible, I have actually been using the M50 for a lot of my professional work lately, which in my opinion is one of the benefits of not only owning this camera but buying the speed booster for it in a few circumstances I would rather have this camera put on my Ronin rather than have the EOS R on the Ronin because it's very small because it's lightweight I don't have to carry all these extra lenses for the M50 I can just use my regular lenses and just bring the M50 with this little adapter. If you've noticed, I've actually used this speed booster with the 16 to 35 in a couple of my vlogs in the past couple weeks. For the time being, I really only use the speed booster for special occasions, like if I need to vlog in very low light, or if I need to use the M50 for a corporate or a professional setting. So the reason why I'm telling you this right now is because a lot of my friends recently have been asking me about what kind of cameras to get, what kind of stuff they should get, because some of them are thinking about vlogging, some of them are thinking about getting into making videos. Of course, I would tell them the Canon 80D is a perfect camera for that because it's really robust, it's very rugged, it's well-built, and it is a very well-rounded camera, but that kind of has changed lately given this little speed booster. But for you out there, if you are interested in purchasing this camera, if you're interested in putting some of your EF lenses or your L glass onto this tiny little camera right here, no joke, this right here is probably one of the best moves to make if you ever buy a Canon M50. I was very, very skeptical about this camera when I first bought it, and then probably after a month of using it, I really fell in love with it, and then I decided to buy this adapter here, and, and at that point, there's really no going back. It's the fact that the adapter not only allows me to put the EF lenses onto my camera to get the focal length fairly close to what they actually are, in addition to making those lenses faster, is what instantly takes the M50 from what I used to think was probably like a six or a seven out of 10 for a camera and bumps it right up to probably a nine in my opinion. Sure, this isn't the best camera in the world. It's kind of like a diagonal step from the Canon 80D, just like how the EOS R is kind of like a side slash diagonal step from the 5D Mark IV, but it really does amp up the capabilities of this camera. So this is by no means a very super technical and in-depth review of the Viltrox Speed Booster, but I am not kidding. This thing is an absolute game changer for this camera. If I have not said it for like the 17th time in this video, I have no idea how many times I've said it. And with that all being said, that is it for this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this one. I've been meaning to make this video about the Viltrox Speed Booster for a little while. I wanted to test this thing out, get a little feel for it rather than just opening it up out of a box and saying, hey guys, I got one of these. I figured that that would be a little bit pointless and I figured that this video would probably make a little bit more sense. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.